The all new 1027. It's new at 027. I am here with Lucas of Lucas Graham. Thank you very much for having me. How are you, brother? I'm very good. I finally got a t-shirt on. Uh, I ruined the only t-shirt I uh, brought for uh, for uh, well less than 24 hours away from LA. <laughs> that, that he's he's in a new 1027 t-shirt right now, and that is going to be like our campaign for the rest of 2019. Just Lucas in our t-shirt, plastered everywhere. I think it's the same color as the album I just put out, so uh, yes, it fits, it matches. It's perfect. <laughs> um, speaking of the album and the music, love someone. What I love about this song, and let me explain myself, but I love that it's not about your daughter. Um, it's about your wife, and I just think, I'm I'm not a father yet, but I see friends and family members, and I, I see a lot of times, it's very easy, I think, for, especially with a first child, to have that relationship eclipse everything else, and even your relationship with your spouse. So I thought it was so romantic that you had this song about your wife following the birth of your child. It was almost like a... Like a vow renewal or something, you know? You could say that. I mean, the the two are interrelated. It's the whole, like, I, be- I became a parent and I travel so much and coming home and seeing, like, what she can do on her own with this uh, little fireball of a kid. And, um, I mean, yeah, I uh, I never felt that kind of love before becoming a parent. And, and it is true that my, I really just got very, like, I just, I started appreciating the love I have with my girlfriend more than, than I did before. It's beautiful. Um, and it is dangerous. I mean, within the first two years, you lose like six months worth of sleep yeah. because you've now got a baby and this baby is usually lying between you in bed now. And and I think it, it can be easy to forget yeah. like the relationship. Yeah, well, that was, I mean, that's that's a heck of a way to kick it off. I'm sure she was over the moon about it. And, um, you know, I, I that's like a wedding song home run and I feel like that's such a, a compliment, you know what I mean? Like, what what bigger compliment than for someone, a couple, to select you to be a part of their big day, you know what I mean? Yeah, we've had a lot of, uh, we've seen a lot of videos from weddings. I just performed Love Song at my manager's wedding uh, last Friday. Yeah. So uh, it, it was fun to see how, like, that wedding got kicked off. Everyone got super emotional, and then they were ready for their first dance right after that. That was a fun moment. Do you get a lot of that, like friends and and family and stuff? Like, uh, well, I got a guy that could perform at the wedding, or no, I don't do weddings. Uh, um, <laughs> I played at the Casper's wedding because he's my manager. I couldn't really say no, uh-huh. but no, I don't really want to be the wedding singer or the funeral singer for that matter. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've always enjoyed performing concerts. If if we should do anything, yeah. Um, I don't necessarily think it would be suitable to have me performing at a wedding or a funeral. Especially for a friend, well, yeah, a funeral, uh, but especially for a friend, I feel like you lose out on actually enjoying the the wedding, you know? And suddenly you're that guy on stage before that. I'm pretty uh, incognito. I, I don't wear a red leather jacket or a fancy, uh, like, a uh, colorful, glittery suit at a, at a wedding like that. Yeah, yeah. So suddenly after being on stage, everyone starts coming up to you and then my night is ruined. <laughs> <laughs> so with the first major label album, you had this abundance of content to pull from, you know, uh, how you grew up, um, you know, getting into the music business, making it big, all that stuff. And then the second album, you're becoming a family man. You have this this new life that you brought into the world. Um, do you ever think you'll get to the point where the, the milestones will slow down, you'll be content? with what you've given to the world music wise and you'll just become a full-time foodie restaurant owner maybe one day uh we we haven't been close yet it's as if every album has been easier to write yeah um every time we go in the studio like everyone i write with from stefan to reezy and the external songwriters that we pull in from time to time everyone gets better Mm. and uh and i think it's about i like i read a lot of books to be inspired and i of course reflect upon my life but uh, I come from a pretty unique place where milestones don't seem to slow down as we're getting older. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's also about how do, how are you living your life? Do you start looking at life like everything's boring or everything's a miracle? Right. Um, I'm on the miracle side yet. Totally. Um, and and I I really do believe it's like a it's a perspective thing. It's it it's like when like talking about how happiness can be a choice. Mm. Because I was like, I was really, really poor, and my parents were really, really broke when I grew up, and mm-hmm. we were super, super happy. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I mean, 
so I've also had everything in the world and been super unhappy. Yeah. So I think it's important just to remember being grateful, practicing gratitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, go run in the park. Yeah. Like get your sleep. Like tell people you love them, and and maybe you'll be inspired for life. Hundred um, percent. I, I know it's far off, but have you thought about maybe what uh, the next color you would like to be associated with the the next album? I have no idea. Um, it always comes to me in like epiphany moments. What color these albums have been so far? Yeah. Um, and maybe it'll be the uh, the green album with the ho- make the world a greener place. Maybe it'll be the red album when we write uh, sixteen Christmas carols. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I, know. I love that you brought up the green one. If you roll with that, because here's what I was thinking. You know, uh, I I think you've grown so much in in such a short time, and and there's just been this trans. Formation, I think, obviously for the better, I think. Um, and when I think of green, aside from money, obviously, I think of, you know, nature, plants and the growth that comes out of that. Yeah. So you could you could run with that if you want. I mean, weed's getting legal soon in the, this part of the world, too. So uh, maybe that'll be what the, what the album's about. I don't <laughs> we don't know yet. We can't, All pot songs. No spoilers out. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> going back to food a little bit. Do you have a favorite spot here in New York? I actually don't. Oh, really? Um, I, I, we have one. Uh, it's like it's called Taverna Baco down on Ludlow. Okay. Right uh, where we go at least once every time we're here. Yeah, yeah. But there's also, I mean, there's so much food in New York that we've. I tried a restaurant hop. Yeah. And try new spots when I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Like on this trip over, we're here for 24 hours. Yeah. It's not like we we get the time to explore. Right. Um. But that is one of the great things about New York. You can totally. pick a cuisine and then go have amazing food, whether it be Japanese, Chinese. If you want to have, like, yeah, you name it, you got it, right? Was was there ever a foreign food you tried that you just couldn't get into? I mean, sometimes uh, I, I eat most things. I had a scorpion once, which surpri- was surprisingly good. I've eaten some of these uh, smelly fruits in Southeast Asia, the durian, that I think tastes I've, pretty good. It stinks. It's great. It smells it like smell. it's. I it tastes, thought it, it's great. It does, but I thought it was so stinky. But when you open it up and you try it, it's delicious. It's like a custardy consistency. Yes. But you know good. they don't let you bring them in the airport because or the of hotels or it, taxis because it stinks up the whole place. Yeah, it's. Um, I don't really get it. <laughs> I thought it was great. And they taste so good. Yeah. I know. Makes but no a lot, sense. Some of the guys, they couldn't even try it because they thought it stank so bad. Yeah. yeah. I know. But I mean, we, I've had some gnarly stuff like calculated pig's blood soup, Ugh. which was not something I wanted to try again. Then frog legs, on, on the other hand, surprisingly good. Delicious, yeah. It, delicious and nutritious. Tastes better than chicken. Yeah. Cockroaches and, uh, and what's it like? Grasshoppers? No. Uh-huh. Live squid was a cool but weird and i don't think i will try it again on on like on purpose yeah 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 yeah. it's you're I mean, bold we've got some fermented and pickled fish from where i'm from so i like yeah I yeah wouldn't say like we, we've got some weird stuff and sure. then we, when you grow up with it it's just so lovely right right totally um let's talk about your your daughter a little bit what uh music are you exposing her to oh she's just hearing everything right now she's wants to hear love someone all the time hear daddy's song love someone oh. and you're like again Twenty <laughs> fifth time today. I also have to go sing it a few times yeah. uh, at work, honey. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I brought her on on TV shows, and then she wants to come for sound check, and then she just sits on me while I sing the song for cameras, which is kind of fun. Um, she listens to everything. She really likes rap music, like yeah. harder hitting beats. She like sits and nods her head. Cool. But also just children's songs. Yeah. Because we're from Denmark, so I play her a lot of English children's songs, learning the colors and shapes and stuff, just to stimulate her a little bit oh i love it is there anything uh, aside from your music that comes on in the radio and her head just starts going and she's super into it nothing that i that comes to mind she just like she wants if, if we put on music she'll dance and she'll f- run and she'll have fun and when we noticed that we just started playing more and more music around her and they said from the from the daycare and the kindergartens we've been bringing putting her to in denmark and los angeles yeah they do like remark upon the fact that she's unusually active once it's music and and uh, song it. yeah yeah um with this latest album was there any song that didn't make the cut for for any reason something maybe you wanted to get on there but you're holding on to or i mean i would say if you have 10 songs on an album there were 100 ideas mm. and on this record we wrote almost 44 songs um if not 44 exactly i can't remember the number yeah uh, so there's 
24 songs that didn't make the cut. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, it's also about the... St- I like to release albums that tell a whole story, so you don't just take, oh, these are 10 great singles, I'd put them on an album. Right. I like the fact that you can start it at A and end at Z, and, and then you've been told a story, and you can feel something after that experience. Right. So it, some of the songs that didn't make the cut had a lot to do with the context of mm-hmm. the album and the content in the album. So can a song recorded in uh, 2018 pop up on a 2023 album? I mean, not a damn thing changed, which opens the Purple album. was like The first parts of that was, were written in the summer of 2015. Cool. So at the end of the day, I'll, songs just kind of grow and change. Sometimes what we do is like you kind of reuse them, graveyard them, like mm. dig them up, chop them up, and they become something new. Um, so yeah, that's definitely possible. I've I've written a hell of a lot of songs. You might not be able to share this, but is there one lyric like maybe saved in your phone that you've been holding on to for a very long time, but you just haven't found the right? I have a lot of lyrics in my books that uh, haven't made it out in a, in a song yet, and the co- right context and the right music and the right melody is waiting for it, and I will not share the lyric. I love it. I love it. Good, good, good. That's a guy. I knew. I knew I was reaching with that one. But um, before we wrap up, what's uh, what's one line, one lyric on this new album that's um, you know maybe the most meaningful or, or the one you're most proud of? I mean, to me, two two lyrics come to mind. There is one from uh, from the redemption song. Uh, uh, you're not the only one. Where it's I'm not sure if it's the chorus that I like the most or it's the the first verse, but the whole idea, like, please give me a redemption song. I need one real bad. No mm-hmm. one seems to write them now that John and Bob are dead. There are so many people with big voices, and they're being used to sell products mm-hmm. instead of talk ideology. Mm-hmm. And I would like maybe if some of these... And it's like we have this term influencer, but what are we influencing? Right. People's spending habits is what we're influencing. Why aren't we influencing people's way of thinking? And then once the way of thinking has been influenced, we can start influencing spending habits to create like a better world. Yes. Um, and then there's the other one, Not a Damn Thing Changed from the opening song mm. where all the boys who grew up back to back still do the same things. Yeah. I'm still just singing songs like I was 20 years ago. Yeah. Some of my guys are doing what they did a long time ago and unfortunately they are still doing that and going in and out of jail <laughs> but at the same time everything changes yeah 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 i you know i got to say you've done a nice job i think of of balancing that you know your home, your core beliefs, and all this this new world of the glitz and glam, I think, you know, not many people uh, can balance it as well as you do. You do a nice job. Thanks very much. I'm just doing my best. Feet down, head up, eh? Of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lucas, thank you so much for hanging out, brother. Thanks for taking the time. <laughs>